What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Odin, or in the words of Mad Max, Jeremy's Pool Boy, coming back with another video today, breaking down the box office numbers for this weekend of November 8th to November 10th. And it is actually a pretty surprising weekend for a lot of different reasons. For one, the number one movie of the weekend was actually not Doctor Sleep, but ended up being Midway, which was a war film all about the events of Midway. Dealing, of course, with the events of Pearl Harbor and also apparently very doing a very good job being historically accurate to those events as well, which is something that I think a lot of people have been really wanting to see ever since we had movies like Pearl Harbor, which became more of a romance story instead. Now, I have not seen this movie yet, so I cannot personally vouch for it, but I have heard from a lot of people that it's either okay or it's pretty good. Dr. Sleep came in with number two. 14.1 million dollars playing with fire the new john cena uh, kids comedy movie came in with 12.8 million dollars dear lord last christmas as i expected did not come into the top three 11.6 million dollars still not terrible as i said it looks mostly pretty much to me like one of those hallmark movies that they decided to release into theaters i honestly thought it was a hallmark movie for a long time and then all of a sudden i'm like wait it's getting an actual theatrical release that's interesting so old people will go ahead and show up to that because it is indeed a Christmas movie early. Terminator Dark Fate dropped out of the top three into getting the number five spot at $10.7 million, which is a 63% drop from week one to week two. Not as bad as it could be. However, that is still pretty bad. Keep in mind that Last Jedi had around, what, 67, 68% drop. So this is very similar to that. And I really doubt that you're going to find a, a whole lot more money to be made by this film, seeing that a lot of other movies are coming out very soon including next week we get Ford v. Ferrari, and everyone's most anticipated film of the year, of course, Charlie's Angels, which I cannot wait to break down the box office for that movie, because, dear Lord, please flop. I mean, that just, oh my gosh, please flop. Anyway, but Terminator Dark Fate not doing nearly as well. Joker, I thought, had a chance to get that number five spot and actually beat Dark Fate, which would have been incredible, but keep in mind, it's now in its sixth week, so that would have been a huge feat for it to have done anyway. But it still got close with $9.2 million. The fact that this film has another 32% drop. As you can see, though, the number of theaters, 2,806 shows that it has dropped out of a lot of theaters because it has been out for over a month now. And so a lot of theaters are starting to try and make room for the new movies. And that pretty much is the natural progression of most films. Joker has really fought against that natural progression by being such a strong performer week in and week out. It's still making around a million dollars minimum a day. Over the weekend, it bumps up usually to around $2 million a day. So that's still an incredibly impressive feat for this film to be able to pull this off. And very happy to see Joker doing as well as it is. Harriet has dropped off quite a bit, 38%. Again, not too much. Again, uh, you know, 38% is obviously not a whole lot, but it didn't make a whole lot in its first weekend anyway. $7.2 million, that was the number I was looking at first. But yeah, 38% drop is not, not terrible. It also is very limited in its release at 2,186 theaters, but still doing pretty well for a film that apparently takes a lot of liberties when it comes to the historical accuracy of the story. And that makes me not want to see the film anymore i remember i was very hyped on it because of the trailer and then all the reviews started coming out and a lot of the people were talking about how it takes a lot of liberties with the story and you know what i don't really need that i don't really need you to put in extra stuff in history that did not happen just so that you can try and make a political point i just i don't need that in my movie so let's go ahead and break down these films individually so joker as you can see let me see if there's any updates 947 million dollars now that is not the most recent number the numbers is somewhat behind in its numbers the the most recent numbers that I've seen have put it closer to $950 million, and even those numbers are behind because we don't have the foreign totals for this yet. Because this movie has been out for over a month, we're really not getting those numbers as quickly as you do on your opening weekends or your first couple weekends. So something tells me that Joker will probably get closer to the 980. That was the projection was around $980 million by the end of this weekend, and most experts are projecting that it will cross the billion-dollar mark by next weekend. I thought I had a chance this weekend. It definitely did have a chance this weekend, but it looks like next weekend will be that crowning moment. There's obviously still a chance that it could slow down enough to not reach the billion dollar mark by next weekend, but no matter what John Campia says, I just watched his video today just to confirm this, he says, I don't think it's going to reach a billion. I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think it's going to reach a billion dollars. Well, you said the same thing about Aquaman and you were wrong, and I'm telling you right now, you're going to be wrong about this too, because even though it's slowing down because it has been out for 36, 37 days, it's still performing extremely well, and it is definitely on pace to cross that billion dollar mark all without China all without bowing down to that communist regime, and also a rated R film as well. Uh, we also have Midway, which is a, a film, as mentioned before, talks about, again, his historical relevancy. 
And I think that is interesting. So just to give a little bit of the uh, behind the scenes stuff, Midway centers on the Battle of Midway, a clash between the American fleet and Imperial Japanese Navy, which marked a pivotal turning point in the Pacific theater during World War II. The film, based on real life events of this heroic feat, uh, tells the story of the leaders and soldiers who used instincts, fortitude, bravery to overcome the odds. So just a little bit of a correction on my part. I said it had something to do with the... Um, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. So obviously there's inspirations from that because that's what got us into the war, but I am not a history major. And so I got that wrong. Battle of Midway, not the same thing. Uh, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. I make mistakes. And when I do, I admit to it. So Midway though, historical film, which is the reason why I think it's doing as well as it is. It's made $21.9 million. It's the number one movie of this weekend. And it doesn't surprise me knowing the American audiences. American audiences tend to actually show up to war films that are actually more focused on historical accuracies than movies like Pearl Harbor, for example. And so because I think this is getting some pretty good um, word of mouth campaign, because obviously the critics, you know, can love or hate this film. doesn't really matter at this point because critics don't mean a damn thing anymore. Um, but obviously there's a there's a very strong market for these types of films that still sell. It's amazing that after all of these years, World War II movies still do very well at the box office. One that is surprising to see, though, is Dr. Sleep not doing nearly as well at the box office. $19.6 million in its opening weekend. And let me try and see if we can get a uh, box office total. So... Let's see if we can get an actual uh, budget for this film. I'm not seeing the budget there. Um, let me see if I can pull that up. So let's see. Dr. Sleep budget. Because this is the thing that I think could potentially mean disaster for Dr. Sleep overall if the budget was incredibly high. I can't see how it would be that high. $45 million. So yeah, not, not too high for the film to be able to make that money back up. But still, you're looking at a $19.6 million opening weekend in both the domestic and foreign markets. That is very, very tepid. There's definitely a chance that it will make its money back, but I don't think it's going to be the movie that a lot of people thought it was going to be. A lot of the backers of it probably thought that, you know, it's getting close release in October. To be honest, I think that this film should have been released in October. I think had this film been released on Halloween, or at least close to Halloween, I think there would have been more of a market for this film to do better. Obviously, it would have been going up against films like Joker that was a lot stronger back at that time period, but... Releasing it early November to me just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for at least the overall aesthetic of what this film is is, is tending to be. I'm actually going to go see this film today. I tried to see it yesterday. A um, bunch of nonsense happened where the movie was on the wrong day, and then somehow I still got into the theater. I don't know how. And I'm going to see Joker instead for a second time, which I was very glad to see again. But this is a film that I'm going to go see today because I've heard mixed things about it, and I want to be able to make up my own mind about it. But it is interesting that the film is not performing nearly as well. And Last Christmas, which is going to pretty much, I think, only appeal to American audiences. I guess you could say a UK audience could be appealing to it because... Of uh, of the you know the actors and the people that are part of it, I'm trying to see here. I, I always forget her name, but uh, Khaleesi herself is in this film. Let's see, cast and crew, uh, Amelia Clark. So Amelia Clark is in this film. So that might bring some of the UK people out and people across the world too. I just uh, it, it just looks so bland. It looks like every other Christmas movie you have ever seen on Hallmark Channel, <laughs> which is why I thought it was going to be a Hallmark Channel nonetheless. So. Going back to Joker just for a second. So as you can see here, Joker has indeed become the highest grossing 15 rated film of all time in the UK. So it says here the highest grossing in the UK, which is incredibly impressive. 15 rated. So pretty much that's the equivalent of the R rating here in the United States. It's interesting how all of those ratings... Uh, are different here. I'm probably wrong on that. That's the same as R rating because R rating for us is 18. So maybe they have an equivalency over there. I don't know the UK rating system, but it is still impressive nonetheless that Joker has hit that milestone over there. For worldwide totals, for a total comic book movie, it has also become the highest. I'm trying to think of the wording for it because it is still a very kind of obscure number four. It is the most successful comic book film based on its budget, basically. So if you take the budget and you multiply it to get to the total amount of money it's made so far, it has the highest it has the highest multiplier than any other comic book film in history, which is very impressive, right? So it's still a very impressive feat for it. As I said, around $980 million is what it's projected to have by the end of this weekend, which means $20 million away for it to cross that billion dollar mark, which will either happen next weekend or at the very worst by the weekend after that. I think most experts are saying by next week seems to be a pretty good indicator if it keeps making a million dollars a day here in the US and keeps making a little bit more overseas, you can see that number come to fruition. But anyway, let me have thoughts about this. Have you seen Midway? Is it any good? Is it worth seeing? What about Dr. Sleep or Last Christmas? Are those worth seeing as well? Also, do you think that Dark Fate is going to, uh, you know, how much money is Dark Fate going to lose? Because even with that number, it's stuck at $143 million. That is so bad. That That is one of the worst numbers that I've seen in a long time. The production budget for that was $185 million. It has not even reached that point yet after two weeks. 
And even if it does, it still needs to make more than that because it costs even more to promote it. And also, of course, they don't get the entire $143 million at this point from the box office because they're splitting that re- they're splitting those receipts with theaters. And by the end of its run, it's more like 60% or so of the entire box office run nonetheless. But what is interesting is that the film is not doing nearly as well. As in, other, uh, as in other countries. So China, it's only made $40.5 million up to this point. This was, of course, being updated as of yesterday. That is really bad. Keep in mind that Genesis, the last Terminator film, ended up with $101 million. There's there's no way that this film's going to reach that here in, the, here in China. So the film might be doing a little bit better than Genesis did domestically, but really not all by that much. I want to say that the drop-offs are just very close and that te- technically Dark Fate's making just a little bit more. But if it's losing money in almost every other market, and it's likely going to lose a lot of steam, especially, as I said, with films like Ford v. Ferrari and Charlie's Angels and other films coming out soon, I I just don't see any way that the film can really make that much more money. And you know what? Serves it right for trying to go identity politics with its marketing and, of course, with the words of Tim Miller, the director himself. And, you know, good rinse to bad rubbish is what I would say. So let me know your thoughts about that and all the things we talked about in the comments section below. If you like this video, smash that like button. Give us a subscribe. It helps us a lot, a lot. You are all amazing. And beautiful people. Have a wonderful day. And as Jeremy's pool boy, God bless.